Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. From time to time I'll get requests for uh, slide lessons and so I thought I'd put together a, a pretty basic uh, Delta Blues style acoustic slide lesson. Uh, this is in the key of D so you are going to have to retune your guitar for this one but I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so it's tuned to an open D. Um, and I'll also provide the tablature if you need that. You can get that at ActiveMelody.com. But I'm going to break this down and show you how to play everything that we just heard in the intro. Uh, note for note. So let's start with tuning the guitar. Alright, so let's get started. Let me first show you how to tune your guitar. So this is tuned to an open D. And here's how I do it. I always like tuning to an open D because uh, it's actually pretty easy to do and you can do it by ear. You don't even um, really need to, hopefully you can do it by ear. You don't really need a guide for that. Um, so here's what I do. I start with the D string, which is the fourth string here. And then I, I tune the um, the sixth string to match that, uh, but a uh, bit an octave lower. So it's really that's drop D. So those of you familiar with drop D tuning, so you can hear it match. Listen. See, now I have two Ds. Now, uh, then I take the top string or the the high E string or the one string, and I'm going to tune that to a D as well. So that now I have three octaves of a D. So we'll have one here, one here, and one here. Okay. Now, the A string, which is the fifth string, stays the same. You don't have to have to touch that. So now we've only got two more strings to deal with. Now this third string, or the G string, it comes down to an F sharp, and and you'll hear it um, uh, with your ear when you'll it'll make sense when I when you hear me put it in tune. Hear it? So that's an F sharp. And then this string, the, the B string or the two string, is going to go to an A as well. So it's going to be an octave higher than this A. So we're going to match it. open D chord. That's how you do it from standard tuning. So the notes of that open D are D, A, D, F sharp, A, and D. So hopefully you noticed in the intro that I was playing with a slide on my pinky. And uh, I have two uh, slides here. I have a, I played with this one on that, uh, which is kind of a brass slide. But uh, they also make glass slides. Um, there's all kinds of different slides and s different thicknesses, and uh, you know depending on your which finger you use, and um, all, and all kinds. So you're going to have to kind of play around with them to see which one you like best. Um, glass slides are kind of nice. That you you got to be careful because they're easy to break if you knock it off the. I can't tell you how many of these things I've broken. <laughs> I've broken through the years, but but um, a lot of slide players, most slide players, I think the correct way to do it is to play it on your pinky. When I say correct, um, I just mean that that actually frees up the most number of fingers. But I do see a lot of players uh, using their ring finger, and then some will actually use their middle finger as well. So um, I wouldn't recommend if you're just starting to learn. I wouldn't recommend. Uh, I would recommend only starting on your pinky. I think that's the most versatile way to do it. And what you typically do is you kind of bunch your fingers together when you're doing the slide, or, or this is how I do it, so that uh, it kind of holds the slide in place. Because you can see it's a little big on my finger. Um, and then that gives you the leverage to be able to do the vibratos and things. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that slides come in a lot of varieties, and you have to kind of pick the one that's best for you. So go to, the, go to your guitar store and ask them to, uh, to, to hand you a few and just kind of check them out and see what feels best on your finger. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the guitar I'm using, I uh, always get questions, this is the Alvarez AP66. It's a great little parlor guitar, it's small, it's great for slide, and uh, very affordable. So if, if you're in the market for a guitar, I recommend checking those out. Um, the Alvarez AP66. Um, before uh, I jump into the notes played in this, um, when I hold the slide, 
uh, one of the things to, to look out for is to make sure that your slide goes right over the fret. Um, that's a question that you, I, I see a lot is where, where do you position the slide? Because you know when you fret notes, when you're picking them, you're pushing down right before the fret because the fret obviously is what sticks up but shrink, shrinks the, uh, the length of the string and, and makes the pitch go up. But with a slide you can't do that and so you're putting it right over, centering it over the fret. And the other thing is you don't want to push down too hard, you just let it kind of glide. Um, you know, if you push too hard, it'll start to buzz or make some weird noises. So if you're starting to get some of that, some of the buzzing or clipping, uh, just loosen up on your the pressure. Just let it very lightly sit on there. I mean, it's just just barely, uh, and there and that takes some muscle control in here that you're probably not used to. The other thing is. Um, to 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 pay attention to is make sure that the slide goes straight up and down so it's perp or it's uh, parallel rather with the uh, the fret and you want it to you you don't want to kind of angle your your hand like that or angle the slide and that's actually kind of a natural thing to do uh, when you're holding it like that you want to make sure it's straight up and down and right in line with that fret and so just practice kind of going up and down the length of the neck making sure that you're lining up. Uh, and, and you'll notice that your wrist kind of does this sort of bend thing to accommodate. And that just takes a little bit of practice, but something you can do in a short amount of time. It, you don't have to be perfect with it. It's not an exact science, but that's really the goal there is to try and get it to go straight up and down. Um, so that you can uh, make the notes. Okay, so uh, I did not use a pick on this. I am playing finger style. And if you're new to finger style, just go ahead and follow along because I think you'll be able to do uh, most of this. Um, you could hear my foot tapping in the beginning. The mic picked it up. And um, that's kind of the, you know, it's hitting right on the beat. One, two, three, four. Now the thing is with your fingers on your right hand is your thumb is going to match that beat and match the tap of your foot. So the thumb plays on one, two, three, four as well. So that's playing on the sixth string. Or the 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 bottom that low D string, so it's like this. Okay, and that's and now here's where the so so far so good, right? No, no problem. Here's where the challenge comes in. Is on top of that, you have to create this one two three one two three one two three one two three rhythm that happens on the fifth string. I'm sorry, not the fifth string, the second string. Uh, and it's actually kind of a combination of the second and third string. Here's what I'm talking about. So we have this going, right? And then we we do we play. Hear that? One two three, one two three, one two three, one two three. And and the natural tendency is going to be for you to do this and match match what you're doing with that uh, with your thumb but you got to kind of keep the thumb going on the beat so the fir that first thing to practice is just getting that that rhythm down now I haven't showed you how to fret this thing just or to what to do with the left hand just yet but I wanted to start with the right hand because it's so important that you know what's going on there so the thumb is taking care of the sixth string what I'm using for the uh, the one two three one two three on the second string is I'm I'm using my ring finger. You could do that with your middle finger as well, uh, but for me that's easier to do with the ring finger. So uh, here it is slowly. It looks like this. Just watch the right hand for now. Let me see, see it. Um, so that's what's kind of, kind of going on there. It's a lot like uh, patting your head and rubbing your, your tummy, you know that old trick. That's what it feels like in the beginning. So just take it at the slowest pace as you can, just so that you can try and work that in. Um, okay, now with the left hand, what I'm doing is I'm sliding up to the 12th fret. Uh, this little uh, pattern here on the neck it helps you see, kind of visualize that with this guitar. That's the 12th fret, and so... Um, so a lot of the, the Delta Blues stuff happens here on the 12th fret because it's a full octave higher than just playing the open chord. And so 
that's kind of a natural place to play a lot of licks and stuff. So the first thing I do is I kind of slide. And um, I'm really sliding. I'm kind of sliding from, I don't know, somewhere around the 10th fret maybe, 10th or 11th fret, but not too far down. It doesn't really matter. You can slide from way down here, but the goal is to hit, to land here on the 12th fret. And, um, and notice too that the slide is not covering all six strings. It's only really covering the first four. That allows these, this string, well, these bottom two strings, but in particular the sixth string to be open so that you can hit that. Otherwise, it would sound like this. It'd sound like, you know, it'd be an octave higher and it just sounds kind of cheesy. So you want to keep that open. So don't fret the, the whole thing. You're just fretting the first four. And uh, now that you know that and you're sliding up. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. And then the second, then after that I play. Now, it's hard to show this um, without my finger getting in the way. I'm going to take, take it off my finger for a minute and just show you. When I do that, uh, so I go. And all I'm doing there is I'm coming down to the third string. Uh, again, I'm sliding from the 11th fret this time to the 12th fret. So I'm going. And then once I get in position on the 12th, then I come down and just play the, the fourth string. So it's. And all that happens, it all resolves there on the 12th fret. Now, the, so that's, those are the notes, and in, in addition to that, you have to have this going in the background. Okay, and that's the first thing to do. Now, that, that's a lot. Um, if you're new to, to this, um, that can take you so, some time, but that's okay. You, you'll be able to do this. Give, give it 15 solid minutes of just over and over, maybe 30, I don't know, but... Uh, all of a sudden it'll just start, your muscle memory will kind of kick in and you'll be able to do it. You may not be able to do it up to tempo, but that's okay. Even if it's really slow. Um, that's okay too. Now, after that, so I go... Uh, and I just kind of came down here to simulate um, really another guitar. It almost sounds like that's what the rhythm guitar is doing. And so this is the lead and that's the rhythm. And obviously you can't do both. So you're... And so for this little shuffle part that happens down here, it's what I'm doing is I'm playing strings, uh, let's see, four, three, I'm sorry, four, five, and no, three, four, and five. Um, I have the hardest time counting strings and frets, I swear. Three, four, and five, and I'm using fingers, my pointer finger, middle finger, and ring finger on, on those, and so they're kind of sitting there. And what they're doing, they're just kind of pulling those, um, those three strings like that. And my left hand goes. And what I'm doing there is I'm fretting the first, uh, first fret on the third string and then my middle finger frets the second fret on the fifth string. So you got this. So you have the open, and then you have this. So, so notice now, in addition to that, I'm also playing the, uh, keeping that, that low D going. Now that would be a great place to just, if you're looking for a way to practice this, just take that, take that beginning part and that rhythm part and just do it over and over. And, and actually it, it kind of, it'll, it'll work, it'll loop naturally. And you could play around with some of the rhythms if you wanted to, uh, to make it a little more entertaining for yourself. 
Um, but that's the gist of the first part of that. All right, so now let me back up and play through that slowly. Now, after that, I have this little part that goes. And what I'm doing there is I'm playing, I'm using my ring finger and my middle finger, and I'm taking, and so I'm playing on strings two and three. I'm pulling them, I'm plucking them with my ring finger. And then I'm taking the slide and I'm coming all the way up here to the 13, 14, 15th fret. And the slide actually does, when you get up, it's hard to see with my fingers in the way, but but what I'm trying to do is get come all the way up this high on the neck. Now, I don't have a cutaway with this guitar. If I did, that would make that a little easier. So for those of you with an acoustic guitar that have a, has a cutaway uh, in the body, that, that makes it easier. But you can obviously do that even without. And so all you have to do is just kind of reach up there. Now, you can see when I reach up there that I'm, I'm not able to really keep it uh, exactly perfect, you know, in terms of being parallel with a fret. But that, that's okay because you're just doing it, grabbing it for a short amount of time, and it's okay if one of the notes is a little sharp or flat. So all I'm doing is going and grabbing that, and then I come down. Then I come down here and I play the third string. Uh, again, fretting on the twelfth fret. I play it with my pointer finger, and then I come up and I grab the 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 one string with my ring finger and give it a little vibrato there so I got so that's kind of how that part sounds so let me play that in context so we have there's the first time and here's the second time Sounds kind of weird when you play it slowly, but now you can hear what I was doing. Uh, I was actually accidentally pushing too hard down here, so you could hear I was kind of going. You're getting that kind of sound. Uh, so you got to be careful. Um, and for some reason, when I play slower, I tend to push down harder. Uh, but but if you hear how I was buzzing and clipping there, that's just because I'm pushing too hard. So you got to make sure that that's just lightly laying across those strings to get the perfect sound. So one other thing to point out is just to keep that thumb going through that whole thing. All right, so let's back up and I'll play through that whole first part of it. You notice I'm shaking it there. Um, that that's something that really, really uh, is hard to do, be just because you're not. It's one thing when you're doing it this way because you're hanging onto the neck, but when you're kind of floating over the strings, it's hard to be exact to try and and play above and below that that fret and 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 hit it every time, and so. What I do um, as an anchor is I use my thumb back here on the back of the neck to give me some leverage. So I kind of press with my thumb so that I can then bring my hand around and go. See how the thumb stays anchored? I think if it, that that's really critical because if you don't do that, you're you're just it's going to be too loose and you won't. There's no way you're going to be that accurate. So you have to have something anchored to give you some. Um, you, you know, some guidance. So you can see the thumb back there. So anyway, that's, that's, so practice that. Just practice it. Again, if I had a cutaway, this would be a little easier to do because my hand ends up hitting this, you know, the this part of the, the neck. But you, you can still obviously do it. Okay, so then I come to the second part, and for that I go. And 
And what I'm doing there is I'm coming up to the sliding up to the fifth fret um, with the slide, and I'm playing on strings. Um, I'm still doing the walking bass on the sixth string, but this time I'm fretting all six strings so that I'm so that I can actually uh, put the slide over the fifth fret there and hit the hit that uh, that low uh, note there as opposed to this note. And what I'm playing on top of that is I'm just playing strings three and two. So it's three, two, two, two. So it's just practice doing that over and over again. And and the, the hard part is gonna be getting the vibrato. If you're starting, just pay attention to the tone. If you're getting those buzzes or clips or something doesn't sound right, just always nine times out of ten, it'll just be that you're pushing too hard with the slide. Let the slide up a little bit so that it just rests on those strings. I mean, as lightly as possible. It's almost like, you know, if you just were to let it drop there, um, it needs to be that light. So, and what I'm doing, I'm just kind of sliding into those notes. Alright, so the first time through I go, then I play, and that's that sounds really, really cool, and what I'm doing for that is I'm playing on strings 4 and 6, and I'm pinching that between my middle finger and my thumb, and I'm going 4 and 6 here, 4 and 6 here, now notice the slide goes down to the 3rd fret. And then I'll take the slide off the neck and just play those two D's. So you're... Now, what gives it the rhythm, though, is I play them together this time, play them together that time, and then when I take my uh, slide off the neck, I play the, the high D and then the low D. And that one little change by playing one note before the other gives you this effect. Hear how it came in first? It, it's it set. It keeps the rhythm going. And I'm kind of sliding into those notes, so you're going. So you don't just play it straight. Slide into them. Okay, so let me back up and play just that part. Oh, that was another thing I, I just did that I should mention too. Um, after I play that, to, to give it a little more soul, a little more character, after, uh, between that and the next time that I do it, I just take my the back of my middle finger and nail and just kind of rake Break down the strings, the middle strings, and let the slide go down. Well, let me do it slowly. You see what I'm talking about? See it? Right here. It just gives a little bit of filler, I guess, is, is really what it is. Okay. Now after that, I play. And that's not using the fret or the slide at all. And it's really easy to do because all I'm doing is, if you'll notice, all the fretted notes happen here on the third fret. So what I do is, I, and there's just some hammer-ons. The first hammer on, this is on the fifth string, so I use my pointer finger and I pluck the fifth string and I hammer on to the third string. Then I take my middle finger and I pluck this the fourth string. Then I take my um, on the third fret here and I, I'm I'm hammering that on with my middle finger. 
Then I come up here and I fret the third fret on the fourth string. Take it off, so then back to just an open fourth. Then back to the open fifth. So we have. Got that? Now notice when I play that fourth string, when I'm fretting that fourth uh, string third fret, I'm giving it a slight push just to push it slightly sharp. That gives it a real nice bluesy as opposed to going. It just sounds too flat that way. I think giving it that little push is a nice effect. So then to wrap up that lick I play I come down and fret the fifth uh, string, third fret. Again, just the middle finger with the left hand to do it. Then I take my finger off uh, the fretboard and play the open fifth string. Now we're down to the low third fret uh, on the sixth string. And that was another note that you may want to bend. And then you release it to get that low D, the, the lowest note you can play, the bottom six, sixth string. So those are the last notes that we just learned. One, two, three, four. So let me play that little run by itself. I'll do it slowly. It goes. Again. You can hear my foot. Just practice that. Oh, watch the right hand. You could either, uh, since you don't have a pick in your hand, you can either uh, go just between the pointer finger and the middle finger. Or you may want to use your thumb for those for that for those bottom notes for those last two on the sixth string. Okay, and at the end of that, then I just play the the little shuffle thing that uh, that we we did a minute ago, where I'm doing it here. Now this time I did it a little different. I'm playing, I'm hammering it on. So I'm, I'm, remember we're playing strings three, four, and five with fingers, uh, these three fingers, uh, like this. Notice what is happening there. I'm, I'm hammering on and I'm pulling off. So we have pull off, on, pull off. So notice the notice the right hand. Just watch what I'm doing. So I'm going. And and so that just gives it that little shuffle. Now you could you could pick each one. You could go. It just depends on your speed and how lazy you are. And I tend to be lazy when I play, so I like to uh uh, take a free pass if I can. All right, so then we come to this final part, which goes, and um, that's pretty similar to what we did on the fifth fret. Um, so what we're doing is we're sliding, we're covering all six strings with a slide because we need to cover that bass note, which is the sixth string. Um, so the, the obviously the bass note just keeps playing the whole time that that on the beat. So, and what I'm doing is this is kind of a cool little technique where I slide from um, you know, I slide in from around two frets below. So we're trying to land here on the seventh fret, and so I'm sliding. This is string three. And so I'm sliding from, call it five, uh, the fifth fret. Um, and then once I get into position, then I'm going to play string two twice. So I'm going to go one, two. So we got. Now once I hit that, then I'm going to go ahead and and not hit a note again. I'm just going to slide down. So I'm going to go. Uh, and, and you'll hear 
it's going to pull really from that second uh, string. It's going to pull that note down, so it's going to go. And it's not an exact science. You're just trying to get it down below somewhere. So somewhere between, you know, around the fifth fret. But then I'm going to play the third string again, and I'm going to slide back up to the seventh fret. So it sounds like this. So. And then once I come up to that 7th fret again, then I'm going to play the 4th string. And I use my pointer finger for that. So I get, all together it sounds like this. Now, throw in the bass note on top of that. And you have that kind of thing going. So. Uh, so that's what I do once. I go, then, then I do this thing where I go. Now for that, I'm, I, this is similar to what we did the first time. I'm just really kind of pinching with my my thumb and my pointer finger strings four and six, and I'm starting here on the seventh fret. Just those two strings. Then I'm going to slide down to the 5th fret, then to the 3rd fret, and then I'm going to do that thing where I take my slide off and I play the high D and the low D. So together it's... Okay, so let me back up. I tell you what, let me back up and play the whole thing. Um, I'll kind of do it slowly so that you have all of that and so you can see where we're at. go this little walk down thing very Robert Johnson thing to do now from the left hand is really easy all I'm doing is going I'm is all on the fifth string and I'm starting on the third fret and I go th third fret second fret first fret open just on the fifth string. Now, with the right hand, I'm playing so it's str string five, four, three. I do that the first time. Then I slide down and play strings five and four. Then five and four. And then just five. So it sounds like this. That's a very typical kind of walk down that you, you'll hear a lot in, in this style of blues. And then the way that I closed it was, and there's a million ways you could do this, but I came up here to the third fret uh, second string, and I'm only playing strings one and two, just those two strings. So third fret second string. And then I came down and played the second fret, second string, and then back to the third fret, second string. So it's just those three, three notes like that. And you're just playing strings one and two. So all together, that last little part goes. And you may want to hit that low D. To, to end it. So, and 
that is the slide song. Now let me go ahead and I'll play through it um, so you have it as a reference. I'll play through it um, and give you a slow, slower version so that you have that. but you have the notes for it. Well, that's all I have for this lesson. If you'd like to know when future lessons come out, make sure you like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash or you follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash We'll see you in the next lesson.